Welcome to Mayo Clinic's ECG segment, Making Waves, continuing medical education podcast. Join us every other week for a lively discussion on the latest and greatest in the field of electrocardiography. We'll discuss some of the exciting and innovative work happening at Mayo Clinic and beyond with the most brilliant minds in the space and provide valuable insights that can be directly applied to your practice. Welcome to Mayo Clinic's ECG segment, Making Waves. We're so glad you could join us. Today, we have an exciting episode planned for you as we discuss artificial intelligence augmented ECG interpretation using smartphone technology. We have an expert discussing joining us who will provide us with a unique perspective and his own experience on this topic. So let's get started. The ECG remains critical to clinical practice. With the advent of new artificial intelligence augmented ECG algorithms, we are witnessing exciting advances. These developments have the potential to improve patient care and clinical workflow. In this episode, we will discuss ECG interpretation using smartphone technology, including AI-powered ECG digitization, existing challenges in automated ECG interpretation, and the future of AI in electrocardiography. We're fortunate to have Dr. Robert Herman with us to discuss this work further. Dr. Herman is a physician scientist with a robust technological background and a deep understanding of AI and machine learning. He completed his medical degree in Vienna, Austria. In 2021, he was accepted to the Cardiopath program and started his PhD work, his thesis, at the University of Naples, Italy. In 2022, he accepted the invitation to serve as a committee member of the European Society of Cardiology in Research, Digital uh, Work, and Innovation. His primary focus is applying AI to improve the diagnosis and management of acute coronary syndromes, heart failure, and arrhythmias. In 2019, he co-founded Powerful Medical, a certified medical device manufacturer designing, developing, and distributing software as a medical device for AI-powered diagnostics and treatment. As the chief medical officer, he has led the research, development, and clinical evaluation of PM Cardio, an AI-powered Class 2B certified medical device aiding clinicians in diagnosing and managing over 40 cardiovascular diseases. Dr. Herman, what a true honor to have you with us. Thank you so much for making time to join us. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks for the invitation. It's always a pleasure seeing uh, your podcast pop up on my Spotify, and it's really exciting to hear that the space that we're working in uh, has a high representation and a lot of researchers involved in this. Yes, the, you know, it's uh, when we see your work and I, you know, I've been following you for some time and we've grown uh, to understand what we do, but I, I think it's, you know, I, I'm really excited to see what you're doing and learning more about your book. Maybe you could share a little bit with the audience of, you know, why you developed this AI powered ECG digitization and how it actually works so that they can be more familiar with it? Great question. So we found it powerful medical in Europe. And unfortunately, Europe didn't really manage to, to tackle digitization as well as, as the US. You know, Germany still uses fax as the primary method of transmitting medical data. And unlike the Mayo Clinic, we didn't really have a 40 years worth of digital ECGs to start our uh, AI development. And for this reason, we really started working on an, a pipeline of algorithms that uh, well, basically extends our access to more data to really train and validate our AI algorithms. So in short, our AI ECG digitization pipeline can convert and standardize any image of an ECG of any format or any manufacturer and really convert this to a fully digital ECG maintaining the original sampling frequency of the of the ECG. So really as if it was coming out of the uh, ECG machine. We can process really ECGs looking like this. And a note to the listeners, I'm holding up quite a messy ECG. We can really process and standardize any paper crumples on the ECG. We can resolve overlapping waveforms that often happen. And we can remove coffee stains or scribbles and are not therefore limited to high quality ECG scans as input. So in short, we convert any image of any ECG of any device to a fully digital ECG that we can use for further processing. 
It's really neat, especially as you mentioned, some of the limitations in maybe more resource impoverished areas or don't have the uh, digital mechanisms to do that. And, you know, it's nice to know that, you know, any coffee stain uh, that I, I put on the paper can be improved and even probably the glare. And I've seen a lot of it. It's, it's quite remarkable. So uh, it's, it's amazing. I, I wonder, what do you see as the current challenges of automated ECG interpretation? And, you know, how do we actually tackle them? So, of course, we as a company, we're not only involved in the ECG digitization space, right? We digitize the ECGs to further process them. And I would summarize the current challenges in this ECG interpretation space in, in, in four major points. First, I think there is a lack of standardization, and this is, this is clear for a lot of domains in medical. ECG interpretation is still quite subjective. And there is little consensus, for example, with the left bundle branch block criteria or the diagnosis of LVH from the ECG. If you doubt this, just look at a comment section uh, on Twitter or Facebook where people post ECGs quite, ECG cases quite frequently. Uh, some of these conversations get really heated and there is a little consensus, especially on the odd looking ECGs that are not as picture book. Point number two is that the non-AI solutions that uh, that uh, computerize the electrocardiogram are very susceptible to noise. We see that with the existing algorithms where if the naturally occurring noise that usually occurs in the clinic, like high frequency noise when the when the waveform is really fuzzy or when the when the baseline of the waveform wanders, these non-AI solutions are very susceptible to that, and these small noise artifacts can really trick the interpretation algorithm. Point number three, I'd say, is the fact that ECG interpretation is, a, I would say, not only dependent on the ECG waveform itself, but also can be very affected by the clinical parameters, such as age, gender, or the symptoms of the patient. Uh, these parameters really have a huge influence on the resulting diagnosis, but not only the diagnosis, but also the triage and management of the patient. So, for example, a classic case is uh, an incidental finding of a, uh, of a right bundle branch block, or then, you know, the right bundle branch block in a context of acute heart, right heart strain uh, uh, during a pulmonary embolism, right? Those are two different things that have different uh, levels of, of, of importance. Uh, however, you can only figure that out once uh, uh, you add the clinical parameters of the patient to the picture. And I'd say number four is really that the fact that even though there is a lot of public publicly available ECG data out there, these data sets are frequently inaccurate and not large enough to actually train and validate a model. It's so true. Those are, you know, a lot of challenges. And I, I know your team's working on, you know, how do we ad address some of those? And um, I think the digitization that you guys have done, you know, helps that. And even, you know, on the social media, it's remarkable to, to see that. And LVH left bundle, I know a lot of people will go back and forth on, you know, what is the true criteria? You know, we, we know, you know, maybe a lot of people with LVH have left bundle, but, you know, the criteria is debatable especially when you look at the early studies. Now, maybe we could turn our attention, uh, unless you have something you wanted to, to add to that, but I'd like to maybe go to the medical device PM Cardio. What do you think? Can we move on to that? PM Cardio is basically a fully certified uh, medical device in the form of a smartphone app, and uh, it's available on both iOS and Android, and it really gives access to any healthcare professional with an access to a 12-bit ECG, to really diagnose and interpret the ECG on the level of a cardiologist. So the way it works is they take a picture of an ECG. And as I mentioned in the previous question, we are compatible due to our ECG digitization, we're really compatible with any 12-bit ECG device, be it paper form or you know, a, a photo of the monitor. And our technology converts this image into a fully digital waveform. And then we run our AI algorithms that detect up to 38 different cardiac abnormalities on the ECG. We do the basic rhythm analysis, we do the arrhythmias, uh, we detect the infarctions and the heart blocks. And I think the big feature of PM Cardio is that uh, the medical device doesn't stop with the diagnosis. So we actually 
put this diagnosis into the clinical context of this of the patient. As I mentioned, tackling the the fact that the clinical context has a lot of uh, has a lot of weight uh, in diagnosing the patient essentially and deciding what the next step is. And we really basically uh, combine the diagnosis with a symptom checker that gathers the clinical context, the clinical parameters of the patient, and outputs a decision for referral and further diagnostic and treatment procedures. So PM Cardio really uh, is a tool to diagnose any ECG and then recommend treatment and uh, referral decision. So it's a tool for non-cardiologist healthcare professionals. That, that, now we have validated PM Cardio, yeah. No, go. I was wondering, what does the validation process kind of look like in, in all this? Right. So the validation aspect, I think it's really important uh, when working with AI. And we have validated PM Cardio on the largest data set of over 12,000 ECG test cases. And we have also tried to benchmark PM Cardio, comparing it to the current state of the art. So for us, it's represented by general practitioners, the family physicians, and uh, the cardiologists. We were able in this validation to really demonstrate a statistical superiority over the non-cardiologist healthcare professionals, so the family physicians. And we were able to also show that the the medical device is actually non-inferior to cardiologists in all of the diagnoses across the board. We've improved uh, arrhythmia detection by five times and also improved the detection of acute MI when compared to the state of the art. And on the second aspect, because of course, PM Cardio consists of the diagnosis, but also then the management, we actually in 2022 ran uh, one of the largest uh, randomized controlled trials, trials trialing cardiac AI software uh, with two health insurance companies in Europe and 58 participating primary care centers where we enrolled more than 800 patients. In short, what we've done is we've uh, basically the participating Family physicians, in 50% of the cases, they've seen the PM cardio and analysis of the ECG and the recommendation for referral. And in 50% of the cases, we were able to just uh, collect the standard of care. So all of the randomization was really performed within the app. And we're currently analyzing the results. Uh, what we know so far is that there is a high adherence rate towards what PM Cardio has recommended in the intervention arm. And we're now analyzing the other endpoints, such as the percentage of adequately referred patients in the, in the intervention group co- compared to the control group, and also other health economic endpoints that quantify the, the costs of the inadequately referred patients. Yeah, those are that's really important. I look forward to that trial coming out. It's exciting that you're taking it to the next level and, you know, seeing how does it impact, you know, it at the clinical level because that's where, you know, you're wanting to take this software, which is really important. So what's, you know, next for AI-powered ECG? And, you know, how can we unlock its full potential? I think there is a lot of interesting research in this, in this space and, you know, there is something that we're doing with a company and, and we're trying to always unlock more from the ECG. Of course, the ECG is currently our primary input that we, that we process within the company. And I think there, there are three ways uh, I see AI-powered ECG really evolving uh, along the next, next couple of years. I think we will move away from training on uh, subjective interpretations to really training and evaluating our models on objective outcome parameters, such as angiographic results or echocardiographic parameters. We see really an influx in this space and a lot of work also pioneered by the Mayo Clinic. And we're also active here. So we have recently worked with uh, Dr. Stephen Smith and Dr. Pendle Mayers on an algorithm detecting even the more subtler acute coronary occlusion. We validated uh, this algorithm on European and US cohorts, and we've, we were able to really increase quite notably the sensitivity of detecting acute coronary occlusion while maintaining the specificity of the STEMI criteria. So really improving the diagnosis of the acute heart attack patients. We can really detect these patients hours earlier than the STEMI criteria and send them accordingly to the cath lab. So we have the, have a study coming out very soon. And we also focus on uh, other 
areas such as heart failure, EP, and sudden cardiac death rolling out soon, soon after this ACS module. I think the second point where I see this, or second path where I see this going is really in the predictive capability space. So we are working on really predicting the, the risk for, for, for these acute events occurring and uh, really trying to analyze ECGs consecutively in time to really try and see who will actually develop this acute event and try and prevent that from happening. And I think with the advances in AI, I think what, what will definitely be uh, quite interesting is the processing of the raw ECG data itself. You must know that uh, due to the, uh, it's a limited uh, human capabilities, we actually have filters on the ECG device, the devices themselves, so hardware filters that fil filter the waveform. And we do that because, of course, the human eye cannot process such a messy waveform as, as found in these raw, uh, raw uh, ECG data. But I think with the advances of AI, we can actually uh, utilize AI to, to look at these raw signals. And I think this could be the key to really unlocking more, more context from the ECG and enabling even more complex topics such as an in-depth uh, analysis of the P waves or trying to uh, uh, predict precursors to atrial fibrillation. This is great. And it's really clear that the ECG remains an essential aspect of patient care. And while we continue to witness advances in electrocardiography, those that Robert and his team are doing, there's still challenges with automated ECG interpretation that exists. Nevertheless, we, I remain optimistic that a solution is inevitable. Dr. Herman, thank you so much for sharing your work and experience on this topic. I look forward to learning more about your exciting work and watching your future unfold. On behalf of our team, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. It's really been a true pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. We invite you to share your thoughts and suggestions about the podcast at cveducation.mayo.edu. Be sure to subscribe to a Mayo Clinic cardiovascular CME podcast on your favorite platform and tune in every other week to explore today's most pressing electrocardiography topics with your colleagues at Mayo Clinic.